a presentation of the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. Every fall, as they have for thousands of years, great flocks of snow geese arrive on Assateague Island. They've come after a summer on their nesting grounds in the Arctic and are now leading their young southward along the same route they have followed for millennia. Many other species of birds migrate along this ancient corridor that hugs the Atlantic coastline. Along the way, there are places where the birds have always stopped to rest and feed, to gather strength before continuing to warmer areas to spend the winter. The chain of sandy islands strung along the Atlantic, known as barrier islands, with their food-rich marshes and fertile tidal zones, have always been a destination and a haven for snow geese and other migratory birds, such as ducks, wading birds, as well as song and shorebirds. But as coastal areas become more developed and crowded, the number and quality of these life-sustaining sanctuaries has been steadily shrinking. Today, we celebrate Chincoteague National Wildlife Refuge, one of those special places along the Atlantic coast that will always be there for migrating birds and other wildlife. In 1903, President Theodore Roosevelt, appalled at the relentless slaughter of egrets, herons, and other magnificent birds, just for their feathers, set aside Pelican Island in Florida as a federal preserve for wildlife and protected it with only one very dedicated employee equipped with his personal shotgun. Roosevelt's executive order signaled the end to a long era stretching back to the earliest colonial days that had seen many of America's wildlife species nearly wiped out by unregulated hunting and loss of habitat as wetlands were drained, forests felled, and the prairies plowed. The year 2003 marks the 100th anniversary of the establishment of that first refuge on Pelican Island. President Theodore Roosevelt would be delighted at what has happened with his idea. Today, there are more than 500 national wildlife refuges managed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service spread all across the United States, preserving and protecting America's precious wildlife heritage. And what a heritage it is. of the National Wildlife Refuge System, as mandated by Congress, is to administer a national network of lands and water for the conservation and management of fish, wildlife, and plant resources for the benefit of the American people. No refuge better illustrates this mission than Chincoteague National Wildlife Refuge. Not only does Chincoteague play a crucial role in providing habitat for migratory birds and other wildlife, but it is also one of the most visited and loved refuges in the system. Both migratory birds and visitors flock to the refuge by the millions each year. Assateague Island, where most of Chincoteague Refuge lies, has played an important role in the lives of local seafarers, fishermen, farmers, and townspeople for more than 300 years. Hunting the many birds that visited the island's marshes meant food for early settlers. The abundant fish along the beach and in the tidal estuaries provided food and a source of income. Another welcome source of income during the colonial period was the cargo that washed ashore from the ships that ran aground and broke up on the shifting sandbars off the beaches of Assateague. 
Most freight during those early days was transported between the colonies on small ships sailing on uncharted waters along the Atlantic coast. After a violent storm, it was not uncommon for local people to find barrels of rum, molasses, sugar, and preserved meats from a shipwreck washed up on Assateague Beach. Some historians believe that one of the ships that ran aground carried miniature horses that swam to shore when the ship broke up. These small horses bred with the regular-sized horses that local farmers were grazing on Assateague, resulting in today's larger but still small Chincoteague pony. Others believe that today's ponies are simply descendants from those that escaped the early settlers. Because of the large number of shipwrecks along this stretch of the Atlantic, Congress in 1831 authorized construction of a lighthouse on the southern end of Assateague. The lighthouse seen today replaced the original in 1867 and has been operational ever since. As the loss of lives and ships off Assateague Island continued, Congress again stepped in and established a life-saving station on Assateague Beach in 1875, one of several along the Atlantic coast. Over the next 40 years, incredibly brave surfmen who lived on Assateague Station made 174 daring rescues, mostly during the winter months. The life-saving stations were decommissioned in 1915, and the U.S. Coast Guard took over responsibility. For many years, the ducks and geese who visited the marshes around Assateague provided a rich bounty for local market hunters. Market hunters sold game to butcher shops and housewives. With the passage of the Migratory Bird Act in 1918, market hunting became illegal. But that didn't stop it. The hunters just became more secretive and more efficient. Homemade guns could slaughter dozens of birds with a single shot. By the 1930s, their killing efficiency began to seriously damage waterfowl populations. One species that was severely impacted was the greater snow goose that always stopped on the marshes of Assateague to feed and rest during spring and fall migrations. Primarily because of an alarming decrease in the greater snow goose population, Chincoteague National Wildlife Refuge was established in 1943 on the Virginia portion of Assateague Island. The land was purchased with money from the sale of federal duck stamps. Chincoteague was one of a number of refuges that were being established along migratory waterfowl flyways. Work began at the new refuge to improve and stabilize the habitat for migrating birds. Dikes were built to impound what little water rained on the refuge. Water levels in these shallow impoundments are carefully controlled by gates in accordance with the feeding needs of different species of birds at different seasons of the year. When the water is low, migrating shorebirds stop and gather strength by feeding on the small worms and insects living on the muddy flats. As these waters are drained during the spring, a variety of seed-bearing plants take root and grow. By fall, if the rains come, the impoundments are allowed to fill to a depth of half a foot or so, just deep enough so that dabbling ducks can tip and feed on the submerged seeds, vegetation, and aquatic invertebrates. While the refuge is guided by the science of wildlife management, it really is habitat that is managed. The areas seen along Wildlife Loop and the drive to the beach are just a small part of the Chincoteague Refuge. The refuge extends north to the Virginia-Maryland border and also includes islands in the bay and a number of barrier islands extending southward for 30 miles. The refuge continues to expand as it adds sensitive wildlife habitat purchased from willing sellers along the Atlantic. 